Good morning, everyone. My name is Pastor Ryan. On behalf of Pastor Walter, it is good to see you here uh, in person, certainly online as well, on this first week of Advent. My goodness, here we go in the season of waiting as we look toward the manger coming up in just a few short weeks. My goodness, where has the time gone? By way of announcement, right after service, uh, we will be gathering, for those that are interested in Newman, to uh, hear a capstone confirmation project on mental health awareness. That is being given by our very own Avery Mosier. We're really excited about that. It is an important topic. should take 20 minutes, give or take. And so uh, if that's of interest, we will have the coffee, we'll have the cookies. Um, come learn more about mental health awareness and how we can get that important word out. And then next Sunday, December 4th, please join us right after service again for our annual December congregational meeting. Now, normally this congregation does one thing uh, at our December meeting. We set the um, council members uh, nominating uh, for the group that will be adding to council the next year. We'll be doing that. And so you can look at the slate of uh, council members um, that we'll be voting on. Details are back there. Take a look at that, join here and vote for those council members. And if anyone else would like to join council that's not been nominated, you can kind of go like this during the meeting, and that's kind of fun as well. The more the merrier. But then the second thing we'll be doing is we're going to be hearing more about our hopes to call an associate pastor, um, the funding for it, how that could look. That uh, certainly could be done through the bequest. That's uh, survey results suggested that. Council has approved an approach, and if that makes sense to the congregation, we can vote to launch a call process to find me a friend, which would be a really good thank you. Um, Pastor Walter keeps telling me he wants to retire, and I, I really would like to honor that, that guy's wishes, you know. Uh, he, he's waving back there and giving, yeah, please. <laughs> so he might have an opinion on December 4th as well. Uh, feel free to ask him. Right, so please come on out for that as well. Again, that's this coming uh, Sunday, December 4th. And then later on, December 4th, um, 5 p.m., we've got social club meeting at Jackie Warming's house. For more information on that, contact Jackie. And then, if you missed it last week, we've got an Advent EDDM postcard. These were given out uh, last week. Uh, you're able to take one for your fridge or more if you'd like. Uh, share with friends. We also emailed these out, emailed, mailed these out to 3,000 local households. Uh, we've got some good traction, people coming in, um, looking for more information, starting to come to these events based on that. So please take one. Uh, it has all of the happenings coming up over Advent. I'll just highlight a couple. What's going on around here, Pastor Ryan, you might ask? Well, we've got our midweek music series that's coming up, uh, Grandview Choir is presenting uh, this Wednesday at 12 o'clock. We've got, let's see, Beloved Community, Holiday Community Meal, prepared by St. John's staff. Oh, apparently we've got some things to do. Uh, that's December 7th. I better talk about that with the group. Uh, Blue Christmas and Cookies, that's a worship service of comfort for those that have lost a loved one uh, in the past few years or so. Uh, Blue Christmas is a format I believe we've done here in the past. We're bringing that back. We're really excited about that. And then certainly all sorts of good things coming up Christmas Eve. Uh, three different services, including our 11 o'clock service. Our family's really excited about that. We haven't been part of a congregation that had an 11 o'clock service in a while. Um, but we've got three options. So please check those out. My goodness, there is all sorts of good things coming up here at St. John's during this season of Advent. All right. And at this point, we're going to uh, light the uh, first Advent uh, candle. God made some promises to his people a very long time ago. He promised that they would never be alone, that he would protect them and give them a future. But the greatest promise of all was that he would send someone to save them. So God's people waited with hopeful expectation for the promise to come true. They waited for a savior. They waited and waited and waited some more. The people who shared God's promises with his people were called prophets. One prophet, named Isaiah, had this to say, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel. Isaiah 7.14 God's people waited for the promise to come true. They waited with hopeful expectation. God kept his promises, but it took a very long time. That's why we only light one candle today. We have to wait to light all, all our candles, just like God's people had to wait for the Savior. We wait for hopeful expectation. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for keeping your promise to send a Savior. 
help us to wait for you this season and to rejoice in what you do in our lives. Amen. Light this candle because we have hope. Congregation, please rise. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous things. Blessed, Blessed be God's God. name forever. Amen. Amen. Beloved, now is the time to wake from sleep. Let us confront our sins and confess them to the one who is merciful and just. God of new beginnings. We confess that we have not welcomed your holy reign. We have strayed from your paths. We prepare for war instead of peace. We dishonor one another and your creation. Purify us with your refining fire and set us again on your way of love, that we may bear fruit worthy of repentance and welcome your coming among us. Amen. People of God, a new thing is growing in our midst. A tender branch, a living sign. By water and the Spirit, you are joined to this wonder. You have put on Christ and your sins have been washed away. Rejoice in the way of the Lord. Amen. <laughs>
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, save us from the threatening dangers of our sins and enlighten our walk in the way of your salvation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. At this point in the service, we get to uh, celebrate a baptism. Always super excited to be able to do that, certainly during the season of Christmas. Um, having babies here is pretty great. So at this point, would ask um, parents, uh, Anne and Andrew Pablocki, to come on up. Bring that cute kiddo, Teddy, with you. Full name is Theodore Daniel Pablocki. If it's okay with you guys, I'll probably just call him Teddy because the name is so cute. That works? Okay. And then sponsors as well, Ryan and McKenna Williams, come on up, gather around the font here, and we'll get going shortly. Okay, hey buddy, looking pretty dapper. You ready to do this? It's got a boss baby look to him, I don't know. Am I safe here? <laughs> All right, let us begin. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacraments of baptism. By water and word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We're united with all the baptized into one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. Parents, and Andrew, this uh, part is for you. Called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have Teddy baptized into Christ? If so, give a resounding, we do. We do. Okay, that sounds like they're pretty serious about this. All right, as you bring Teddy to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities. To live, to live with them among God's faithful people, to bring them to the word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach them the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments. It's okay, we'll get into that during confirmation then. <laughs> to place in their hands the Holy Scriptures, to nurture them in faith and prayer, so that Teddy may learn to trust God, to proclaim through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and to work for justice and peace. Do you guys promise to help Teddy grow in their Christian faith and life? If so, say, we do. They still sound pretty committed. Okay. Sponsors, this part is for you. Do you promise to nurture Teddy in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit to help them live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? If so, give a resounding, we do. We do. We do. That sounds like a high-level commitment as well. People of God, right? This is a community endeavor. We all lift up the child in their new life in Christ. Do you promise to support Teddy to pray for them in their new life in Christ? If so, say, 
We do. Yeah. We do. Okay. Sounds like you got some people here, Teddy. We're going to celebrate that. All right. I ask you now to profess your faith in Jesus Christ, to reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? If so, congregation, everyone give a resounding, I renounce them. I renounce them. Okay, let's renounce that. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? If so, say, I renounce them. I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, say, I renounce them. I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, O God, maker and ruler of all things. Your voice thundered over the waters at creation. You watered the mountains and sent springs into the valleys to refresh and satisfy all living things. Through the waters of the flood, you carried those in the ark to safety. Through the sea, you led your people, Israel, from slavery into freedom. In the wilderness, you nourished them with water from the rock, and you brought them across the river Jordan to the promised land. By the baptism of his death and resurrection, your son Jesus has carried us to safety and freedom. The flood shall not overwhelm us, and the deep shall not swallow us up, for Christ has brought us over to the land of promise. He sends us to make disciples, baptizing in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Pour out your Holy Spirit, wash away sin in this cleansing water, flow the baptized with Christ, and claim your daughters and sons. No longer slave and free, no longer male and female, but one with all the baptized in Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right, Teddy, you ready to do this, man? It's good temperature water. I swear I checked, bro. It's going to be good. Okay, if you would lead him over there. It won't hurt much at all, I swear. Or maybe not at all. <laughs> Theodore Daniel Pablocki, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son <laughs> and of the Holy Spirit. We're not going to drown you, man. I promise. There you go. <laughs> uh, not a fan. <laughs> uh, congregation, let us respond with blessed be God. Blessed be God, the source of all life, the word of salvation, the spirit of mercy. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Teddy, with the gift of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forevermore. Amen. Teddy, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the crest of Christ forever. Amen. All right, now we get to move to the candle. I mean, who doesn't like light, right? This is pretty great. This symbolizes that Jesus is the light of the world, and that is entering your life right here. Mom, would you like to hold on to that? Thank you. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Let us welcome the newly baptized. Congregation, please respond. We welcome you into Christ and into 
and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. All right. Take a little road trip, hey? Okay. Let's see. Okay, I'll go for it. All right. Congregation, if you would, please welcome the newest child of God, Theodore Daniel Pablocki, into the body of Christ, dapper little dude. Super cool. We are thrilled to have you with us here today, buddy. God bless. You did it. You totally did it. You're official now. There, back to Dad. Our first reading for this first Sunday in Advent is found in the second chapter of Isaiah, verses 1 through 5. The visionary message presented in this reading focuses on a future day when God establishes a universal reign of peace. Divine decisions will make war obsolete, and the worshiping community responds, let us walk in the light of that Lord People of God, listen for the word of the Lord. The word that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our second reading this morning comes from the 13th chapter of Romans, verses 11 through 14. Paul compares the advent of Christ to the coming of dawn. We live our lives today 
in light of Christ's coming in the future. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, About that day and hour no one knows, neither the angel of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field, one will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together, one will be taken and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Congregation, you may be seated. Kids, come on up for the message. Miss Anne's going to be uh, doing that for us this morning. Thank you, Anne. Happy New Year! Did you guys know that it's a new year at church today? It is. Today is the start of the new year at our church. Our church year ended last week with Christ the King. Remember we were singing soon and very soon we're going to see the King? Well, That was the end of the year and now we're on to a new one. But it doesn't match the year at, like, on the calendars, right? No. <laughs> um, have you guys ever had to, or have you guys ever tried to stay up and wait for New Year's on our calendars? You ever tried to wait up until midnight? Yeah. Did you make it? No, yes, yeah. Yeah, no, Adriana, you've not made it to midnight. Sophia? We go all the way to midnight? Yeah. Is it hard? Is it hard to wait? No? Yeah? I think as you get older, maybe it's a little bit easier. When you get older, older, it's even harder. <laughs> oh, 
Well, drink your parents' coffee. That might make it easier. <laughs> parents might not appreciate it, though. <laughs> uh, so waiting can be hard. What else have you had to wait for in your life? Is there something else you ever had to wait for? Graham, birthday. To get out of school, Christmas, summer. Going on a trip. I have something you have to wait for. What? The weekend. <laughs> Anyone else ever had to wait for something? It's hard. Yeah. When something is done, something is finally done and you get to go and leave, maybe, it can be something hard to wait for. Waiting is hard, even for adults, right? Waiting is not easy at all. But we have to wait. Even the reading today tells us that we have to wait and be watchful. So today we start a new year at the church. We start it with a season called Advent. So today is the first Sunday in Advent. Do you remember how many Sundays are in Advent? Four, right? Like the four candles on the wreath. We have four Sundays in Advent. And Advent can be a little bit like that New Year's Eve when we're waiting for the ball to drop or we're waiting for our birthday. It's a lot of sitting, a lot of listening, not a whole lot of crazy, fun, exciting things to do, right? What are we waiting for at the end of Advent? What comes at the end of Advent? Do you remember, Adriana? Christmas. And what happens at Christmas? Graham? Jesus' birth, right? So we're doing all this time waiting. We're spending four whole weeks waiting and talking about something that's going to happen in four weeks. And that can make it seem a little long. And waiting is definitely not easy. But it's something that we have to do. And as we're waiting... Just like people waited a long time ago with the prophet Isaiah, we have to wait and listen and watch and do the other things that Jesus has already taught us to do. What are some of those things that we can be doing as we're waiting for Christmas? Should we be bugging our parents for what we're going to get for Christmas? Uh, I got some yeses, I got some noes. All right. Graham, what else can we be doing during Advent as we're waiting for Jesus? Getting ready. Maybe that's setting up a Christmas tree. Maybe it's just cleaning your house. Right? Getting ready. Helping moms and dads get ready for what's coming at Christmas. Because it's important. Adriana? Were you raising your hand? No. What about being kind? Is that something God tells us to do? Is that something we should do even when we're waiting on something that takes forever? Yeah. It may take forever. We still have to be kind. We can still pray. Right? Maybe as we're waiting and getting ready ourselves, we can help others to get ready, right? So this time of Advent, it's going to be four weeks where we are preparing and getting ready for Jesus to come. And that may look a lot of different ways that we're going to hear about over the next four weeks, okay? But it's going to seem like it takes a little bit of time. So can you guys pray with me as we get started in this Advent season? Congregation, please join in. Um, repeat after me. Dear God, Help us to be patient and wait for your coming at Christmas. Help us to listen to your word and share your love with all. Amen. All right, my friends, you may come get a piece of candy as you go back to your um, pew.
Thank you, Anne. And I gotta say, as far as uh, kicking off the Advent season, waiting is hard is a pretty good summary of the whole thing. Yes, good stuff. Around year 50 of the Common Era, mere 15 years after Christ last walked the earth, the Apostle Paul wrote to the Thessalonians, encouraging them to wait for the second coming of Christ. It is a time when the dead in Christ will rise, writes Paul, joining those alive and be caught up all in the clouds together, meeting the Lord in the air. Sounds pretty cool. Ever since then, again, that was written 15 years after Christ last walked the earth. Ever since Paul penned that letter, many have been making bold predictions about when exactly this momentous second coming will be. In year 156, Common Era, Monotonous, that's the founder of an early Christian movement that goes by his name, predicted that Jesus would be returning in the lifetime of the group's founders. Coming up pretty soon, he thought. Over 1,800 years later, well, here we are. In 1525, when Martin Luther, an ex-monk, married Katrina von Bora, an ex-nun, many Catholics at the time predicted their offspring would fulfill an old tradition. That tradition, you might ask? Well, it's that the Antichrist would be the son of such a union, and as a result, bring about the end of the world. So they were worried about a bunch of Antichrists running around. Um... Gosh, Michael, you were raised Catholic. Do you see any antichrists around here? No, you're taking, okay, just point them out later if so. We'll, we'll do our best with that. Okay, thank you. And yet 500 years later, right, we as Lutherans, well, we're still here. Hopefully there aren't too many antichrists around. During World War I, the official publication of the Assemblies of God, that's a denomination, wrote with certainty... They prophesied that Christ will come before the present war closes. Again, this was during World War I, no later than 1934 or 1935. That denomination has 13,000 churches in the U.S. and 60 million, 69 million members worldwide. That's a lot of Christians. It's a lot of people there. There's nothing to sneeze at about that. And yet, well, we're still here. In 1979, Chuck Smith, founder of the Evangelical Calvary Chapel System, published a book fittingly called End Times. In it, he claims the birth of the nation of Israel in 1948 triggers the last generation, using bits and pieces pulled from Scripture a little bit here, a little bit there, to tweak his formula. Chuck then adds 40 to the number calling that the generation of judgment, and subtracts seven for the number of years of tribulation. By Chuck's calculations, 1948 plus 40 minus seven equals 1981. That, he concludes in the book, that is the year of the second coming. This from the man who started a system of 1,700 churches with millions of members worldwide. 1981 is the date. What happened then? Nothing. And then there are the predictions from Harold Camping. Who here remembers uh, Brother Harold? I, oh my goodness, maybe you will in a little bit. Uh, this is an engineer turned evangelist turned Christian radio broadcaster. He made a series of prophecies that grew in number and detail over the course of decades. His first widely noted doomsday prediction was for May 21st, 1988. He later published a book simply titled 1994? Question mark? Setting a range of dates for September of that year. Camping a passionate numerologist amid scathing criticism once those dates came and went, kept on going. After those days uh, went, he conceded, wow, there are some errors in previous calculations. And then he got to work building a better formula. The end, he later concluded, would come on May 21st, 2001. Excuse me, 2011. 
That date was based on a complex formula involving the flood survived by Noah. We heard about that earlier, which he dated at 4,990 B.C. And then that began a 7,000-year clock ticking from the moment of the flood. But then don't forget, he told his followers, subtract one year to account for the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament calendars. Are you guys all following that? Yeah? I kind of struggle to. Pastor Walter, do you? No? No, I got nothing here. All right. Um, and then when that date came and went, you might remember this in the news, calc- uh, camping recalculated again, and the number he came up with this time was October 21st, 2011, just a little bit farther. That must be the right date, he claimed. That's got to be it. Camping was sure of it. All this from the leader of the Family Radio Christian Broadcasting Network. That's a group that at its height broadcast in 150 markets with a global audience in the millions. These are influential people making these predictions. And then what happened on October 21st, 2011? Hi! (laughs) To be fair, yes, even we Lutherans got an end time talk way back when as well. After Luther's death in 19, excuse me, 1546, many leaders predicted the end was near, with one pastor writing at the time that 1590 would be it. There it is. Time marches on. I, pastor Walter, I just want to give space. Would you like to make any predictions ab- about the second coming? Noon today. Noon today. Okay. <laughs> Set your clocks. Uh, We did get through confession and forgiveness, so I guess we're okay with that. All right, noon today. Thank you. Well, all right. So if only all these authors and numerologists and pastors and priests and prophets and prognosticators, if only they'd done just one little thing before spreading what became much to do about, well, nothing, if only they'd taken a closer look at our text today from Matthew chapter 24. If only. For when it comes to apocalyptic, there it is, when it comes to apocalyptic predictions of this sort, Scripture is really pretty clear. About that day and hour, no one knows, verse 36 says. No one knows. Not the angels, not even Christ, but God and God alone. As people, we crave certainty, don't we? It is the basis for our government, our economy, our families, our faith. And when we find ourselves in the middle of the challenges of life, we crave it even more. Would anyone like to predict when COVID-19 will be done with us? Anyone want to throw that prediction out there? No? All right. If you did, I'd really like it in writing. Sometimes it is nice to think we can fast forward past the challenges of this life and look towards the pearly gates for our post-life salvation. Perhaps that is what these end-time prognosticators are aiming for. Because let's be kind of honest, those pearly gates do sound kind of nice. But in doing that, we miss out on the simple blessings of the here and the now. And we miss out on God's purpose for us in the present. For Christ came not to save us from the world. Instead, Christ came to bring salvation to the world. I'll take it a stab at a prediction. Why not? Let's go. In 28 days' time, on December 24th, billions of us will gather together in person and online. We will listen to stories of angels and shepherds, a manger, a new hope dawning. We will smile at friends, family, loved ones. We will smile at strangers that we've never even met. Our hearts, after hearing tales from long ago, will be strangely warmed. We may even shed a tear or two while singing Silent Night. 
by candlelight once again. That's been known to happen. And in that gathering, you will be reminded of all the good Lord has blessed you with. In that moment, you'll remember all the potential that can be in this mixed up, crazy, beautiful world that happens when we follow the star to the east. As we patiently, ever so patiently, meander to the manger this Advent season, let us not ignore the challenges this world faces. Let's not look past them to the end. Instead, let us celebrate a Savior that is coming to show us the way through darkness to brighter days. For that is a Savior that is coming quite soon. Amen. As we prepare for the fullness of Christ's presence, let us pray for a world that yearns for new hope. God of all, your children everywhere cry out for mercy. Awaken the global church to the urgent needs of our time. Bless bishops Elizabeth and Amy, pastors Ryan and Walter, the staff, leaders, faithful, and guests of St. John's. Break down barriers of culture and custom and unite people of all faiths in your redemptive and healing work. God, in your mercy. God of wonder, the earth's beauty and abundance is your gifts. Teach us your ways of sharing resources and caring for life. Guard fragile habitats, preserve the wild places and protect endangered plants and animals. God, in your mercy. 
God of peace, you judge the nations. Beat our weapons into tools for serving the neighbor. Strengthen the resolve of all who work for an end to war. We pray for lasting peace in the land of Jesus' birth, the, in Ukraine, and in our homes and cities. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of loving kindness, you desire fullness of life for everyone. Fill those who hunger. Comfort the grieving and attend to those near death. Bring help and hope to any who are sick or needing your care, especially those in hospice. Martha Nymaster, Joyce Hansen, and Bill Fullerton. We pray for others who ask for prayers. Bonnie and Anne, Margaret, Jill, her husband and, fa her husband and family. Gina, Reba, Paul, Don, and others we name. God, in your mercy. God of promise, your goodness is everlasting. We give thanks for the lives of the faithful who now rest in you. We trust that you will bring us into the company of all the saints with rejoicing. God, in your mercy. God of our longing, you know our deepest needs. By your spirits, gather our prayers and join them with the prayers of all your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Let us greet our neighbor. Please rise.
The Liturgy of the Meal is on page 144 in the front of your red hymnals, page 144. Please stand. Let us pray. Gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need through Jesus Christ, who sets a table for all. Amen. be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and all places give thanks and peace to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you also make all things new, in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Let us proclaim, come Lord Jesus. Come Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us, bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people, fill us with your light. 
bring the gift of peace on earth as we say, Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and honor are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gather into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Christ invites all to the table. Come, taste, and see. Please be seated.
Please stand. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. God, let us pray. God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God, who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. And may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. Go in peace with Christ beside you. Thanks be to God.